Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee Inc. And in this video, I'm going to give you an overview of using Cold Cure Catalyst in water-based inks. We're going to use the Amex range, and um, we've also gone into lots of detail about different methods of curing water-based inks in this video here. And that's going to be really useful for small studios. In this video, we're going to show you what Cold Cure Additive is, how we add it to our inks, in what ratios, how it actually works, and then we're actually going to do a wash test to show you the results with and without cold cure additive in your inks. In our own studio, we always use the tunnel dryer to cure our water-based inks because it's efficient, effective, and we've got one. However, I do teach a lot of new beginners and I supply screens to lots of new small home studios. And they're often asking me how to cure the water-based inks and know for sure that it's not gonna wash out and they just don't have access to tunnel dryers. So I always suggested cold cure, but I've never really investigated it myself. So that's what this video is doing, making sure that cold cure works and can be used in all types of setups. This is the t-shirt that we're going to be printing in this video today and please remember that we actually fund our YouTube videos by the sale of our Blind Maggot merchandise. And we like to give our, all of our Squeegee viewers a massive £10 off at checkout when you use Squeegee in the discount code section on blindmaggot.co.uk. Cold Cure Additive is something that you would add to water-based inks in order to help the pigment and the binder adhere to the fibres of the shirt. So it's not merely a case of just evaporating the water from the water-based ink, this actually helps the binder attach to the fibres. That's something you can do with heat application, however if you haven't got access to those heating elements like the conveyor belt or even the heat press, this is probably your option if you want to be able to sell things that are printed with water-based ink that you think might go through the wash. So it is a relatively expensive product because it's about £42. However, you're only using it in small quantities. So you add it in a ratio of 5 to 10% and then it's just giving you that reassurance that it's going to be to a professional standard when it's cured. There's other examples of when you might use cold cure additive. For example, even if you're in a professional studio and you happen to be printing on some difficult fabrics where like you can't really apply too much heat, you just want to do it with water-based inks and not apply heat, then you could use the cold cure additive as well. We're going to be using this in the studio with just our normal Amex water-based inks just to keep all the chemistry together and that's just what it's been designed to be used with. We're getting ours from Screen Print World in the UK and all of our squeegee viewers obviously can use our personal discount code with Screen Print World which is CRP5 which should hopefully take a little bit off the price for your cold cure additive. This cold cure additive is actually a catalyst and that means that it speeds up a chemical reaction. So with a lot of catalysts, they only have like a limited shelf life. With this one, it's eight hours once stirred into your ink. So we're gonna be mixing it with our normal Amex water-based ink. And I think for this job, we're only gonna need about 200 grams. That means that in total, I'd have 180 grams of my normal water-based ink, and I'm gonna add 20 grams of the cold cure. And um, things to think about there is just that you're mixing up enough you're going to use it within that time frame, so eight hours of printing is a lot. So if you do need to mix up another batch, just have that in consideration. Um, make sure it's really, really thoroughly stirred. You've definitely hit that five to 10% ratio and you should be good to go.
it comes to actually printing with this ink, you're actually going to not notice any changes or differences to when you're printing with normal water-based ink. The printability and like the viscosity, like how thick it is, is very, very similar that you wouldn't be able to tell. So just use it like normal, do your normal print job. But then the thing to think about is that you need to anticipate having all these printed shirts and like where you're going to put them around your studio. So it might be a case of hanging them up on rails, putting them on a rack where you can still get airflow or just laying them out on tables um, all offset against each other so that the water can evaporate out of the ink over the next couple of days. Because you need to leave it for 48 hours in order for it to cure to a professional standard. When it comes to cleaning up this ink, it's very similar, or if not exactly the same, as cleaning up normal water-based ink. So I just do it with a sponge and a bucket of water. I use the soft side of the sponge and just get it all out of the mesh. Or I might even bring it out into the washout booth and give it a quick rinse. Say if it is kind of like ingrained in there because you've left it to dry overnight or something. Um, I like to use this one. So I apologize, it's really, really dirty, but I have it right next to my washout booth normally but it's just the Franmar Aqua Wash and it's specifically made for breaking down pigments in water-based inks, which I found really, really useful for dried in ink. So again, just use it like normal, wash up as the same and it shouldn't change anything in your printing. We went ahead and left the shirts for 48 hours, which is the recommended curing time for the cold cure catalyst. And then on Monday morning, after leaving them for the whole weekend, we did a wash test and that was in the washing machine at 30 degrees cycle. So we've got wash test results here. This one has been also printed with cold cure, but we didn't put it through the wash. And this is the one after the 30 degree wash. So as a comparison, as I'm standing close to it now, I can see a very slight fade in the wash results of the cold cure, but it's, it's, you might not even be able to pick it up on the camera, it's so subtle. Um, I would still be quite confident in sending this out and I think it's a professional standard. Um, so I'd say it's a good result, however you can achieve like even more vivid results with a tunnel dryer for example. For reference, I wanted to show you what a cured shirt looks like once it's been through a tunnel dryer. So that's going to be like this. And I would say it's kept all its vibrancy from when it was printed and after the wash test results. So it's really, really rich and black. So this is the standard that we normally put out. But again, it's very, very, very similar to the cold cure. So I can definitely see that as an option. And now I want to show you what it looks like with no cold cure additive with your water-based inks, which looks like this, which is pretty terrible. Um, so this one was just printed with water-based, no cold cure, no curing or like heating elements or anything. It was just left out in the studio with all the other shirts for over the weekend and then done the wash. So this, you can see that the fibers haven't, I mean, the pigments haven't bonded to the fibers at all. And uh, this is where you'd start to get complaints from customers and it would be a nightmare. So we can definitely see the use for adding cold cure in a professional setting. If you want to get your hands on some cold cure for your next print run, then you can use the CRP5 discount code at Screen Print World. However, you can also use it if it is time to invest in a tunnel dryer. So the big buddy is from Screen Print World as well, and you can also get a, quite a substantial discount using CRP5. Um, and it's just 
Definitely something I would use personally in the studio because it just gives the best, most rich colours. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and enjoyed it. And please subscribe to the channel to get notified of our next video. And uh, it would be great if you could add a like and any comments and maybe tell us about how you cure your water-based ink in the comments section below. Well, anyway, yeah. you need to come down a bit closer as well. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, it's Chessie from Squeegee Inc.